Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we're going to make use of Illustrator alongside with an amazing 3D app that you already know to create this. Before now, we actually don't cover things that has to do with Illustrator and it is quite interesting the kind of things that is now available with that tool. Illustrator is a vector based tool that is made available by the folks at Adobe and it has a brand new update that deals with you being able to create 3D objects directly in Illustrator and of course a new thing that you can actually do with that which I guess a whole lot of people including me didn't know not until I came across Docu3D retweeting a tweet from Roland Olamide that was a tweet of a TikTok from Jolie Hohansen Art. And what that tweet is all about is you can actually make stuff directly in Illustrator and export it. Before now, you can actually make your Illustrator art and export them over to Maya and convert them to 3D objects. And at the same time, you can make your Illustrator art and save them as SVGs and also export them to Blender and convert them to 3D art. But this is a whole new level as we're going to explore how you can do these things. First off, you need to get Illustrator, which you can actually get for free right now for seven days. And that is more than enough time for you to use Illustrator to do the amazing artworks that you want. And of course, if you cannot get Illustrator from the web, you can actually download the Creative Cloud and you can use that to download Illustrator for free. And once you have Illustrator open, you can now go ahead and define the image size that you want. And once you're done, let's go ahead and start off by using a text. So in this case, I'm just going to type in the word 3D and with that word typed in, Let's change the fonts to Montserrat. It's one of the lovely fonts I like using. Now with that done, the next thing which we need to do is to give a bit of colors. So we're going to give some outline colors and also some few colors. And once we have that going, the next thing we need to do is to select the font, go all the way to effect and go all the way down and you would notice you have 3D and materials. Now, once you hover around here, you'd notice that we have the extrude and bevel, revolve, inflate, you know, all the nice things. So we're just going to keep this as extrude and you can play with the depth. If you want to, you can use this to change the positioning. In this case, actually not positioning. You cannot kind of orbit in the object and we can also play with the inflate. So with this inflate here, we have even something nicer. Let's turn down the depth just about a point like so. Let's say something like that looks nice. So with this, we can also zoom in by holding down Alt on the keyboard and rolling the middle mouse button. And that way you notice that we have this beautiful 3D object. Let's increase this just about a little more. So I'm just going to set this to 20 so that we can get that there. And other things we will do is to go ahead and make some more ads. Now in this other example, what we're going to look at is not working with text anymore but we might just try something a little bit different. Now what I'm looking at is creating a much more revolving object. So we might just make a profile. So once you have all of this good to go, let's also make sure that we have this, you know, slightly chamfered. We can now go in, make sure that we have this object selected and we can throw in that revolve. Now with the revolve, you can create a simple revolve of this object and you can always, you can always play with the offset. So we can offset this to make it a bit wider and make it a bit closer, depending on what you want. How we can export this is as easy as having it selected, go over to file, go all the way down to export selection. And then down here, you would notice we have an OBJ. Previously, what you would get if you just download it for the first time is the PNG thing. And you can go all the way down to OBJ. Now with the OBJ file here, I've set the part that I want, which is a Blender 3.1 part. We can change the name. So I'm just going to call this 3D model. So let's call this 3D model. Press the enter key. So we can grab that in and we can hit the export button to export it. And that is how easy it is. Automatically export and you can see that we have it right in here. Now, if you do have Maya or any other 3D app that you like to work with, you can easily pop those open. So in this case, we have Maya running. I'm just going to click and drag and drop it right in there. And if we zoom all the way back, you can see we have a clean 3D model here. We can also bring that down, tap F on the keyboard, and you can see it looks pretty, pretty nice. So in case you're thinking about exporting your stuff, this is nice. If you like to bring this into Blender, for example, you can also do the very same thing. So contrary to Maya, where you have to just click and drag, you can go over to file, go all the way to import, and you import the OBJ file. So in this case, I'm just going to grab that file, click on import, and we would have that file loaded right in. So it's also worth knowing that if you compare what we have 
in Maya versus what we have here. I mean, if you just simply turn on the wireframe, you would notice that this is quite a dense mesh. So it's also one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is these files do not come with textures, which means you might have to texture these things all by yourself. And this is where working with add-ons actually come in very handy. So what we're going to do is instead of texturing these things one after the other, which of course you can go ahead and add materials to, we would like to take advantage of the real-time materials made available by Ducky 3D. So this real-time materials is just one of the coolest things that you can get if you really want to create motion graphic style text and at the same time, you just want to save time and get things up and running. I'm going to put a link in the description that can get you up to that. And for this particular project, what we're going to do is import all the necessary assets that we want. And then we can go ahead and create just a little bit more stuff. For example, we can create the backdrop and we can add a couple more elements, you know, just to fine tune the entire scene. And something else that you can do is to add lights. Lights actually bring out that vibrant and nice feelings to your renders. So why not include as much lights as you can? And once you're done with all of these things, the best thing to do now is to select the object, go all the way to the object menu, scroll all the way down, and you're going to find the real-time materials. Now, if you don't have the real-time materials, link is going to be in the description where you can get it, and this will just make your life even way more easier. Instead of struggling with how to create materials and then dealing with how these materials are going to tie with the object that you're creating, you can just simply take advantage of the real-time materials and start creating that impressive visual that you've always wanted to make. So what we're going to do is just apply as much materials as we want, you know, just select from the long list of things. And the beautiful thing is you can always edit these materials on the fly. So we're going to test out how this performs with both Cycles and also Eevee, just to get that visual that we're going for. And in most cases, you might want to animate these characters. And I do know that most of you guys may want to give the base, since we're working with an inflated object that does have a base, you might want to give the base a different color and then give the inflated object a different color. So what we're going to do is to just simply go ahead and switch these to the edit mode. Now within the edit mode, we need to make sure that we're within the top view and this is set to wireframe. Now how you can set this to wireframe is by tapping Z on the keyboard and switching over to wireframe. And in that case, you will be able to select from the top view and select the exact vertices or faces that you want. So to get these faces selected properly, you need to make sure that you have, you know, some sort of spot on view for this and try to make sure that you're using the faces instead of using the vertices or the edges. In this case, you'll be able to select from the top all the way to the bottom of the object. And the next thing to do is right click, go over to separate and separate by selection. Now, once you separate by selection and jump out of the edit mode by simply pressing the tab key, you would notice that you have two separate objects. Now with these different objects that you have, you cannot apply any kind of material you want to the base and also to the inflated part. But before we get into animation, you would notice that if we try to move the base now, we cannot because the base is independent and the inflated part is also independent. So the best thing to do is select the base, select the inflated part, hit Ctrl P on the keyboard, and then parent the object with transform. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep the transform for this one. So what we can do now is to go ahead and add a couple of keyframes to get the animation happening. And how you can actually get your object animated if you're new to Blender is this simple. Select the object, go over to where you have your object properties, and you'd notice that these tiny nodes here are your keyframes. So what you can do is we can rotate this by a given value. So for example, if we like this to rotate, let's use the Z axis. If we like it to rotate from here over to this point, we would need to get the rotation that we want, minus 26. Click on this button to add a keyframe. Move the playhead to wherever you want, in this case, frame 40. And we can set this all the way to plus 26. So once we get to plus 26, let's actually dial that in. We can also go ahead and click on this button one more time to add that keyframe. So once you push the playhead back and forth, you notice you have an animation. So to set the animation so that once you start from here and get to this part, it stops. You need to go over here and set this to 40. And once you do that, if you press the playback button, you notice that your animation just keeps happening. And this is exactly the same thing that we're going to do for all the other assets and at the same time, the camera. So you can also select the camera and animate it however you want. And this is just super easy. And one last thing for your animation, try to make sure that you have your interpolation set to linear if you don't want to have those weird ease in and ease out. So go ahead, select all of your keyframes 
and change the interpolation to linear. And finally, for those who are thinking about playing with Illustrator and creating 3D stuff, it is very easy for you to do any of that right now. So in this case, if we just go ahead and create a simple ellipse tool like this, or maybe you would like to explore with other tools, of course you can. So once you create the object that you want, you can just simply go over to effect, go down here to where you have the 3D and materials, and you can choose to do an extrude and bevel, or you can explore other options. So with extrude and bevel, it's worth knowing that you have access to playing with the bevel. So in this case, you can play with the bevel however you want. And if you go all the way down, you can choose to repeat the bevel patterns depending on what you like to create. Now, this is beautiful. And for those who are thinking about creating revolve or maybe you would like to inflate stuff, of course you can. If you're also thinking about just making a plane object, you can simply click on the plane object and this would also create a 3D model that is a plane. If you're also thinking about exploring more bevel options, there's a whole lot of bevel options that is available. And for those that are thinking about materials that would work directly in Illustrator, you can click on the plus sign and load in your own .sbsar substance files. Now, if you don't have that, if you click on this button, it will take you over to the Substance Store where you can download free materials and use directly here. And for those that are also thinking about lighting, you can click on the lighting section and you can choose to play with different types of lighting presets that currently exist that you can use to fine tune your model and get the most result. And once you're done, you can click on this button to simply render your file directly. And this is definitely a pretty cool addition to Illustrator. Is it necessary? That is actually something that's debatable, but for sure, for those who like to get 3D objects created directly in Illustrator and render them really quick, this is definitely gonna come in very handy. But one thing is sure that whatever that you're making here only exists in Illustrator. And if you like to explore this even more, you might need to go over to file, go over to the export selection and export this as OBJ. So once you export this as OBJ, you can start taking advantage of all of the cool things that Illustrator has to offer and quickly create 3D models for yourself. And for anyone who is thinking about making some amazing art, you can simply share that on social media and tag me with the handle displayed on your screen. And this is for both Instagram, Twitter, and also for every other social media that you can catch me on. At the same time, you might want to join the Discord and also share that on Discord and that would be wonderful. And for those who like to get the final file, it's going to be available on Patreon. And for those thinking about getting the real-time materials, links to that is also going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.